steals up our plates Papa saying grace Louisiana living sweet as sugar Welcome to the Story Table, brought to you by Providence Church in Lake Providence, Louisiana, where they want you to know that you are loved. Surprise, surprise, surprise. (laughs) Anybody? Does anybody recognize that throwback to Gomer Powell? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll move on. Hey folks, it's Shelly, and I know, I know, it's been ages since I dropped a podcast here on the story table, right? So here's the deal. When I left live radio in favor of podcasting from my home here on the banks of Lake Providence, I had every intention of podcasting regularly. Regularly. That was the plan. This is how it's going. Me popping in regularly for months and then dropping out of the podcast rhythm for every bit as long. Frankly, it is hard to believe, but I used to churn out five, that's right, five features a week for close to 20 years. But life's all about seasons, my friends. And in this one, I'm trying to continue answering the call of ministry on my life while keeping up with the challenges of being in the sandwich generation. It's a real thing, y'all. That said, I want you to know that you've been on my mind. You have. I have people asking me if I'm going to revisit the Gray family this summer. In the event you missed that series, you're going to need an explanation, right? I released a novel called Sierra Story on this very podcast, one episode at a time, a couple years ago now. You can still find it in the archives if you want to go back and catch up. I thought telling y'all Sierra's story would be a once-and-done exercise. But y'all are making me rethink that. Stay tuned for news. We may be headed back to Providence after all. Oh, that was the name I gave our fictional town. I know, I am incredibly imaginative. But enough catching up. I'm going to get to why I slowed my roll to podcast today. If you haven't heard me talking about my latest book, Seizing the Good Life, well, you aren't on social with me and you aren't reading your newsletters. I'm more than a tad excited about this one. And I love talking about it, period. But today, I have some files from the audiobook version of Seizing the Good Life, and I have permission from the publisher to share these excerpts with y'all. Now, this delights me because I get to let you hear exactly how the book is set up. It's sort of different, like yours truly here. There are 21 chapters in my book that correspond to the 21 chapters of John's Gospel. And each of my chapters are broken into three sections. There's the Dear John opening. That's where I talk to John in a storytelling, conversational style And people, it is not meant to be a seance. Hear me, that's not biblical. This is simply me trying to help us see what it was like when Jesus broke into John's world so we can better see him in ours. Then there's the Dear Reader section. That's where we get into the Bible study of the corresponding chapter. And finally, there's the Dear Jesus section where I journal a prayer for us to help us implement what we learned in Dear Reader. Got it? Okay? Here's a taste of each of those sections. Seizing the Good Life audiobook is narrated by yours truly and produced by Oasis Audio. Chapter 1. Realize you are purposed and equipped for these days. Dear John, I'm super excited about finally sitting down to write you and fairly nervous. I considered opening with my habitual greeting, I hope this finds you well. That's crazy, right? What with you being in heaven? Would that have amused you? Maybe you and Jesus would have laughed together. I can't wait to hear Jesus laugh out loud. But forgive the strange opening. I'll start over with a proper introduction. Hello, John. My name is Shelley. 
I'm good with just using first names if you are. It feels silly to introduce myself to someone I've spent so much time with, though I suppose the familiarity is one-sided. You might not know I've been buried in your gospel for months now. Or do you? Perhaps you've seen me poring over your words and scribbling in all the margins. If so, did you roll your eyes at my never-ending questions? Do people roll their eyes in heaven? I have a lot more questions where those come from, John. I live in a small American town in the 21st century, miles and oceans from the land you called home. Generations have come and gone, governments and empires too. And daily life? Where do I start? It's changed in ways you'd have to see to believe. If you were here, I could pick up my smartphone and call you from one side of the world. And if you answered from the other side, we could literally see each other while we talked. But you don't know what a smartphone is, do you? More on what we call developments later. The thing is, John, and this is where I want to park. People today don't seem all that different than those you describe in your time. I see us in all your stories. For example, That was a sample of Dear John. Now here's a sample of the Dear Reader sections. Dear Reader, I have experience in trying to capture an audience's attention and hold it long enough to get to my message. It's why I open meetings and Bible studies with storytelling, and confessions of my zanier-than-I-should-be escapades. The stories serve as appetizers, while the crowd gives me the once-over, drawing conclusions about whether they should care about anything I'm there to say based on how I look and what I'm wearing. Isn't it funny that they think I don't notice? I believe the self-effacing humor is disarming and helps prepare my listeners for the word. John's communication style is the polar opposite. The man opens at full speed, and he's laser-focused on his main subject as he regales us with one passionate description of Jesus after another. Our first passage is lengthy and so worthy of our attention. Let's stay in it and consider the sheer majesty of this otherworldly being John attempts to define in human terms. John 1, 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him not even one thing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of mankind, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not grasp it. A man came, one sent from God, and his name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. This was the true light that coming into the world enlightens every person. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and called out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who is coming after me has proved to be my superior, because he existed before me. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. God, the only Son, who is in the arms of the Father, he has explained him. Woo! John is a frenzied artist adding breathless strokes until a portrait like no other stands before us. Only then does he catch his breath and invite us into the rest of his gospel. And yet, we'll soon see that John never stops trying to wrap words around the mystery of God's Son walking among mankind.
John the writer barely concludes his enthusiastic effort to help us comprehend that God himself has appeared on earth in the image of his son before he practically strips gears to introduce John the Baptist. And finally, here's a sample of the prayer journaling that closes out each chapter. Dear Jesus, help us grasp the supernatural wonder of who you are and the miracle of your coming from beyond our world to show us the way home. You not only made a way for us to follow you there, you opened a way for us to live with you here. Give us fresh eyes to comprehend this mystery and a hunger to experience its reality. And would you start with me? I can be optimistic one minute and worried the next. When I get preoccupied with curating the best life I can for me and mine, and my eyes fall to this world as if this life is all there is, the rising darkness of our time slams into me, making me feel helpless and anxious over the future my kids and grandkids are inheriting. But you are the eternal word, giving life to everything, bringing light to everyone, and perfectly demonstrating God's unfailing love and faithfulness for His creation. Help me look to you before I look around me so I can walk in your light and reflect your light to those around me. When my eyes are on you, I feel promise and purpose instead of fear and anxiety. As we watch some people passively denying your existence, and others actively working to oust you from society, help us remember no one and nothing can extinguish your light. Those who fight against you will be forever separated from you. Let this realization move us to spirit-led compassion and intercession for their souls. Help us live encouraging others to follow you and keep us from becoming an obstacle to them by falling into the trap of influence peddling. We confess that left to ourselves, we can even make our pursuit of you about us. Deliver us from this evil. Thank you for being the stairway connecting heaven and earth, allowing us to experience the stabilizing joy of living with you in our turbulent world. Forgive us for not making more use of this divine access we've been granted, for only in your presence can we find the courage to live bold lives that hold out your glorious invitation to those around us. Teach us how to be supernatural stair climbers. In your blessed name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, there you go. Samples from the Seizing the Good Life audiobook. I pray this Bible study draws you closer still to the lover of your soul. For Jesus is the good life.